Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number 10, I want to say, of my Tampa Bay Rays Out of the Park Baseball 17 series, 18 series here, excuse me. So today we are back with the mid-season update for 2019. So far we are off to an even better start than I could have imagined, 33-18 and 18 playing some spectacular baseball so far. I think the best win percentage-wise that we were at one point was like 24-12. and 12. Since then, it's evened off a little bit, but playing really well. Uh, four games above our run differential, so maybe not entirely sustainable, but still our run differential is seven games over, um, you know, just 49 games into the year, something like that. F I can't even do math. I guess this is only 41. No, this is 51. God, I'm bad. But anyway, um, so playing really good baseball so far. I've been very pleased. Uh, a lot of our young talent starting to, I guess, uh come i don't even know what the word would be but our young talent's playing really well that's the big um big driving force behind it josh bell doing josh bell things jake bauer is having a pretty good year he's got a 382 obp um kiermeyer having a pretty typical kiermeyer year not the best offensive season but doing what he does providing defensive value and so far staying healthy we'll see gonna knock on wood for that one richard urena has been a big breakout star for us so far this year his ratings haven't gone up but his numbers are looking great he's uh, got an 877 ops so far in a 35 starts hansen doing alan hansen things pretty much having you know something close to the same year he's had the last couple of years um abanez hasn't been great but i'm not uh, i'm still holding out hope that you know he's going to come around and you know he's been a two and a half win player so if he's your eighth or ninth best position player it's not the end of the world and you know as of now he's maybe our seventh best position player i guess well by war he would be sixth uh, but, you know, that's even with Kiermaier. I would think Kiermaier, we could say, is, is pretty sustainably better than him, of course. Now, we're getting we're getting really good production out of guys, so I'm not sure are going to be able to keep it up like Luke May, like Alan Hans. Well, I think Hansen for the most part, should be able to keep up what he's doing. But Urena, I have my doubts about. I think Tellez still, though, could be a little bit better. I mean, he's hitting for power, but not really getting on base as much as I would like. Um, and then our bench hasn't been great, but... Uh, pitching has been all right. Sale in his first year, not spectacular so far. 4-6 ERA, but I think that will come down. I think his FIP is probably better. Yeah, three six seven. So I think he'll he'll uh, he'll be better in the second half, or even just moving forward. Snell has been really good so far, although still dealing with control issues, walking over five guys per nine. So the strikeout to walk ratio isn't great, but he's keeping the ball in the yard, which is huge. Perez has been pretty solid, kind of you know what we want out of him as a number three starter. Honeywell has not been great, but De Leon has provided, uh, you know, almost 60 good innings for us so far. And, you know, looking like he could be a pretty solid 3-4-5 kind of guy for us now moving forward if he keeps this up. Um, bullpen has been hit or miss. We've had some, you know, really good seasons out of guys like Morin and Felipe Rivero. Uh, Biagini, who just got came back from AAA, he had gotten off to a very good start in AAA this year, but uh, not has not looked good in the three and a third innings of work that he's gotten so far. Our Rule 5 draft pick, Brad Week, has looked really good. 2-2-5 ERA so far. Farquhar, pretty meh. Barrett hasn't had a huge sample. And Archer's actually not been bad as a sort of long reliever type, throwing uh, 32 innings so far in 15 games. So hopefully his ratings will bounce back. We've got options, um, you know, for guys to get called up here pretty soon. I mean, our farm system is still pretty deep in terms of uh, guys who could just serve as depth pieces. Guys who can fill in other options that we'd have at certain spots. But Anyway, we got the first year player draft, so let's get right to that. I'm going to delete all my messages and start her up. We got the number seven pick. So the game did recognize the fact that we did have a top 10 pick, so we didn't have to forfeit that pick for Chris Sale. We did have to forfeit our, or we will have to forfeit our second round pick. So we have to hit on this one. It's going to be an important pick for us if we want to get something out of this draft, because usually after those first couple rounds, there isn't much in the way of major league talent. But uh, let's auto draft until our pick. So. Um, we've got three four-and-a-half-star potential guys, according to Theo Epstein, Carlos A. Cortez, who I don't really love, Kevin Dunn, who looks like he's got pretty good ratings, not a power hitter, but I do like the fact that he looks like he's going to be a good base runner, so it could be a, I mean, wow, we had 5'10", I guess this is high school season, but that's pretty insane, um, maybe not the best defensive outfielder either, but his personality looks pretty good, keeps an open mind and tackles all of his assignments, so I like him. Um, Jim Fisher looks like a reliever past that. Could look at these guys. Kevin Dominic doesn't look like he'd be too bad either. Center fielder, um, probably a, a better defensive outfielder. And often that's a good personality to have too. So he would be an option. Um, past that, I don't really like 
these guys, Jeff Layton, maybe extremely self-confident. I don't really love his personality. The Sean McPike looks interesting. He looks like he's got some good hitting ratings, and he's got a good personality too. 1500 uh, demand, though. $1,500 demand. Johnny Hubert. Uh, I, I don't know if this guy would fall to the third round, but it would be nice if he did. So I think I'm going to go with Kevin Dunn. It would be Dunn or Kevin Dominic, probably. I, I do like Dominic a little bit. Um, but his numbers, I, I these must not be high school numbers. He must play in a, in a better league than Dunn. But it does seem like Dunn is, uh, is the most surefire thing. So we're going to go with him. I really like his avoid K rating. That's huge in this game. And that's, that's huge in real life, too. I mean, if you don't strike out, if you put the ball in play enough, you don't have to hit it hard to have a high average. Um, so... All right, uh, third round now, pick number six. So really none of the guys that we had initially liked are left. This Dylan Molden is interesting, although the OSA ratings do not like him. Chris Rice has some decent hitting ratings, potentially. And this Carlos Cortez is he's a four-and-a-half, five-star guy. So I think we'll pick him just on the pedigree. I don't really love his skill set, but if anything, could be an asset. Um, now this Dave Hunter is still available, along with Dylan Molden. Molden is looking for a $2,400 bonus demand, $2.4 million bonus demand, excuse me, so I don't love that, um, but he's pretty much the only guy I really think is worth taking. Um, now we do have, you know, we have $8 million in the budget right now. I want to save some of that, though. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to pass on Molden in hopes of getting, being able to land somebody within the international free agent market. So we're going to auto-draft the rest of the way. Um, hopefully the game doesn't take high money players because like I said, I do want to save that money. So now looking at our negotiations with draftees and these are two below slot guys, so we can definitely sign them and then past that. I probably won't meet any of the impossible signability guys demands. Garrett Beck looks like he's the only guy even worth talking to and his ratings are pretty bad. So, all right, I'm going to skip forward to July 1st. All right, so we've advanced up to July 2nd. Look at this. Wade Miley was the pitcher of the month in the AL in June. That does not make any sense. He wasn't even in the league last year, but whatever. <laughs> that is funny to see. Um, all right, so, yeah, our record has fallen now. We're only 41 and 34. Definitely coming back to earth. Still in first place, but only by a game over Toronto. We did get Alex Colome back off of the DL. He was out for... Uh, I want to say like a month. Um, so you can see he's only thrown 19 and two-thirds innings so far this season, and we're up into July, so you would think that number would be higher. But he hasn't he hasn't been great so far this year, but the, the peripherals have been better. You can see the bad right there. That's not going to stay like that all year. So you would think he's going to get better. He's been you know pretty good for us the first couple seasons. So uh, And he is team controllable for another year, so definitely not a guy I'm looking to get rid of anytime soon. Um, other than that, the pitching has not been great. De Leon has really faltered here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Perez, has, his numbers have gone down. Sale has yet to kind of take that step forward that we're looking for out of him. And the lineup hasn't been as good either. Uh, Gillespie's getting hot, which is nice. We need his bat to warm up. But Tellez, still kind of his numbers hovering on the same thing that, as they were. Ibanez, uh, his numbers have gone down, really struggling at this point. I'm surprised they aren't getting Travis in there more. Um, you can see he doesn't even, he only plays second base if the starter's tired. So, you know, maybe at this point Ibanez becomes a trade trip for us. He has not looked good since we picked him up from Texas. Um, Hanson's numbers have come down. Urena's numbers have come down. Kiermaier's numbers have come down. Bauer's numbers have come down. So pretty much everyone is sort of regressing at this point, um, which is not what you want to see. So, you know, if I if I looked at a spot to upgrade this team, it probably would be with uh, or in the lineup. I mean, you can see we're only tied for 11th and runs scored now. Uh, the OBP is 11th. I'm sure the slugging is not that much higher. So the, you know, the starters numbers don't look great either, but I think there's more upside with our rotation. And we just, we have our five guys. Um, I think to swap one out for another, I, I don't, I don't really see, like, I think our five starters are all guys that we want to be here for the next couple of years. So I don't really want to disrupt that. Maybe Perez is, like, the one guy I would think about moving. Um, but Honeywell I want to keep. I mean, he's controllable for another five years. Same thing with De Leon. So these guys I want to build around. I want them to be a part of, of the future. So I don't want to give them the axe quite yet. There are definitely spots in the bullpen that 
you know, would be, might be worth upgrading. I think Barrett, we've seen, he's only thrown eight innings, but Biagini's been, he's been better. He's got the ERA down to three five five. So even though the walks are pretty high, uh, I think, you know, I've, I've confidence he can, well, I don't know, actually, he really hasn't looked good since we traded for him either. So who knows? I think, you know, really we would be in the market for a lot of different things if we were going to be buyers at this point, which it looks like we're going to be. But we will see. So let's look at the international free agents, and it appears that there's really only one guy worth going after. Luis Contreras, and he's looking for the full $5 million. We are going to offer him the full $5 million because we have that $5 million available to us, so why not offer it up? If I can spend $5 million and get an elite prospect, I would do that every time. Hopefully he pans out. Of course, it's a different story, but... Anyway, we sent uh, our idea fade Farquhar to um, activate Col- Colome, and he does not want to be sent down. So hopefully, I can trade him and just dump his salary because he does make like 1.2 million, I think, or maybe even like 1.8. So I think I'm going to be able to get like a 4A player for him, but we will see. Okay, so here are a few different guys. Are they all making salaries? Yes, they are. That's not good. Uh, Farquhar makes 1.2. They really won't just do a salary dump, will they? What if I offer up... Hmm, I could offer up, like, a Justin Williams. I don't really think losing him would be a big deal. Yeah, let's do that. Justin Williams. He's definitely just a bench bench piece. Oh, well, our, scout, our scouts kind of like him. I don't know. It's kind of tough, kind of tough. So maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll just bite the bullet and eat the money on Farquhar. Because it's really not that, uh, it's not that much money. So, all right, we're just going to release him. Eat the money on that. Keep simulating forward until we get a response from Contreras. Which should be after today. Let's see. Negotiation update. So we can't go over the five million. We just have to offer it to him again. But I think if I just keep offering it to him, eventually he will sign it. I found that in this game, um, because there is a cap on how much you can offer guys. Eventually, if you just keep, even even if they keep coming back to you and saying, "Oh, I like this team's offer more," if you just keep offering them the five million, eventually, I found they will accept it. We will see if that continues to hold true, and it does right here. So we sign Contreras. We get a five star pitching prospect. With a good personality too, which is nice. So, and you know, even if he's only, even if he's only three star, these ratings are are pretty decent. He could definitely be. He definitely looks like a, a future major league starter for us. He's only five eight, but we'll see. I mean, we've seen a lot more kind of short starters uh, come up and be successful lately. Look, guy, looking at guys like Marcus Stroman, Julio Urias. So, uh, a couple guys who are up for extensions: Michael Silverman. I do want, or Matthew Silverman, excuse me, I do want to extend him, uh, mainly because I read about him in the book, The Extra 2% by Johnny Carey. He's a very smart businessman, um, even though his ratings aren't great in this game, the assistant GM spot isn't really that important. So I'm just going to pay Silverman because I want him to be a part of the organization, even if it's just my own sort of personal aesthetic. Um, Jim Hickey, though, definitely can go. Our pitching has not been great, and his ratings are not great either, so I think that's definitely a spot we could look to upgrade on the coaching staff. We've reached the all-star break, back up to nine games over 500, starting to play a little bit better again, um, but still not really creating a ton of separation yet uh, between us and Toronto or us and New York, so it looks like it's going to be a pretty tight divisional race through the rest of the year. I don't really see, well, I don't see us pulling away. I don't really know, but I'm not going to speak for the other teams. Who knows? But let's take a look at who our all-star representatives are this year. So going through the list in the AL, Blake Snell making it, so... He's having a really good year despite the walk issues. Keeping the ball in the yard, a big thing. The Babbitt ball so down there in the 260s. That's always going to help. But whatever, we'll take it any way we can get it. He's been definitely our best pitcher so far. So happy to see that. Mike Morin, I should say our best starter because Morin's been a filthy out of the bullpen so far. 2 3 6 ERA. Uh, that trade looking pretty good. I don't even remember what that trade was. It was Matt Duffy. So yeah, that's definitely looking like a good trade so far. He hasn't even played for the Yankees and the Majors yet. Uh, and he's hurt right now. So. Oh, they're not going to fault the Yankees for that. Uh, but anyway, who else? Do we have any bats? It looks like Josh Bell makes it up to 2.7 war so far. Not Offensive numbers not where they were the last couple of years, but uh, maybe those will get better in the second half. Who knows? We'll see. And those are our only representatives. Anyone else we care about, recognize, used to be on our team or anything like that? How's long, I kind of want to check and see how Longoria is doing for Toronto right now. Uh 
because I haven't looked at his numbers in a little while. Let's go to Toronto if we can. Taranto. I don't see Longoria in there. Starting lineup. See even on the team still. Does not appear to be interesting. So he must have gotten traded again. Surprising for sure. Yeah, he's definitely not on the DL. So I don't know who he got traded to. Well, if we see his name pop up, I'll definitely want to look at his numbers. So it's July 29th. We are two days ahead of trade deadline day. Back to just five games over 500. Still in first place. Amazingly enough, Toronto playing even worse than we are right now. But my confidence in this team quickly dwindling closer towards zero. Our run differential also quickly dwindling towards zero. Um, just not, I'm not really encouraged by much with this group right now. We're really not playing well. Um, so it, it's tough. I mean, I think if we're going to make a, a sort of win now type of trade, it's got to be not only with this year in mind, but also with next year and the year after that in mind, that kind of move. Um, we have guys in AAA too. You know, I think Zach Birdie, he, he's probably earned a call up at this point, especially over a guy like Jake Barrett. I know Barrett's only had 11 innings of work, but we're going to make that move. I don't really want to mess around with the bullpen too much in terms of going out and getting a guy to fill a spot because I think we have guys who should be filling these spots. I mean, you look at our three best relievers. These should be three really good relievers. And then past that, I think we've got very capable middle relief guys. Brad Week, unfortunately, has really regressed. But still, I have faith. I think, you know, he looks like he could be a good lefty. At least definitely a lefty specialist for us. I want to hold on to him. Archer, he hasn't really built his value up at all. So we're not going to be able to get anything for him, I doubt. Yeah, literally nothing. So... He is stuck with us, or we are stuck with him, I should say. Um, and, you know, I, I already talked about the rotation. I just, the only guy I would consider moving is Perez. Um, it would be the kind of, it would be the kind of play where I would trade Perez for, like, a second baseman and maybe trade Ibanez for a pitcher, kind of do that kind of swap. We do have, D well, all right, this Jim Fisher guy. It's just a reliever prospect, so. Ooh, there are some interesting offers. I mean, Anthony Rizzo thing about Rizzo is this contract is super affordable but it's not for a ton ton more years and he's not he's not really a superstar in this he's more of like a a good first baseman not a great one so I don't really know about making that kind of move plus we don't really have a hole at first base now a guy like Jose Ramirez would make more sense he does not make a lot of money at all and he can play pretty much all three infield positions although he has not looked great the last couple of years still that one kind of intrigues me a little bit. Martin Perez for Jose Ramirez. I'll keep that one in mind. Charlie Blackman, I don't really have interest in. I don't really want to get an outfielder. I mean, I think our corner guys, I believe in. Like, I'm, I don't really want to replace any of those guys. Ooh, yes, Manny Grandal is interesting. He makes way too much money for us. He's definitely too rich for our blood. But he's a very, he's a really underrated player in real life. I don't think enough people understand how good he is. Um, and it's weird because he plays for L.A. You would think people would... uh would know, but I guess his numbers weren't. I mean, I think I, I people people probably don't like him because he only hits two thirty. But you know, he hits for power and he walks a lot. So and he plays he plays good defensive. He's a good defensive catcher. So God, I can't. My English is is so bad right now. Uh, now we have this Colton Long offer. This has been on the table since the off season. He is not really playing any better. I think I would honestly rather get Jose Ramirez than Colton Long at this point. Just because of the contracts, I mean, pretty much neither player really stands out from the other. So I would just take the guy with the better contract, and that's definitely Jose Ramirez. Um, some good relievers being offered to us. Brad Miller, we could get back. He, uh, he's still on that contract that we gave him. He's playing left field now for Toronto, curiously enough. Can I see? This wasn't a long ago trade, was it? No, okay. I want to. I really want to see the long ago trade or see where he is now. Um, so I'm not really interested in Brad Miller. So, I mean, in terms of getting, like, we're not going to, I mean, I'm, I don't really want to trade Perez for, like, a prospect, but that, that kind of move is also not really on the table for us. Carpenter is pretty interesting, but he's old, and he's going to make a lot of money. So I think if we were to make a Martin Perez trade, the most appealing one has got to be the Jose Ramirez offer. So we'll keep that one in mind. Um, let's take a look at it. Because, you know, we do, I think, some stability with our infield would be nice. Especially with a lot of these guys now sort of coming crashing back to reality. And I'm going to be shopping around a lot of these guys. I mean, I think, you know, we've really yet to find even anyone who I think would be a, a starting a starting infielder for us for even next year. I mean, I don't really know that any of these guys have guaranteed themselves spots. 
So, we're definitely going to be looking at offers for all these guys. So, the thing about moving an infielder is it's going to be tough to move him for another infielder, per se. Um, I think this game is pretty smart when it comes to those kind of trades. They don't really offer up, like, good infielders for good infielders. It's more like guys at other spots. Um, so... You know, in terms of using a guy like this to upgrade our infield, I don't really know if that's going to be the way to go. But I think if we found, if we got a good offer for a starter for one of these guys and we wanted to use him and Perez as a spot and then use Perez to get us Ramirez, I could see us pulling off that kind of move and just getting, you know, sort of incrementally better. Might not be a huge step forward, but at this point it looks like a couple games might be the difference between making the playoffs and not making it, so... And we definitely, I mean, you look at the, you know, once our lineup kind of gets past, well, even a Banya's inning leadoff is not great, but I I wish they would play Travis more, but I guess I guess his ratings aren't great. I don't know why the game doesn't like him. Um, Hanson I don't really want to move, but Urena is still a guy. I mean, I think at this point Urena has kind of shown us what he is. I don't, you know, a year ago I was sort of still in the spot where I wanted to hold on to him in hopes of him reaching his his potential, but... It doesn't appear that it's going to happen with us at the very least. Of course, he could be a change of scenery guy, but who knows. This is one kind of interesting offer, Forrest Wall. I do like his hitting stats. I bet our scouts, well, our scouts don't love him, but, you know, he's a 290 type hitter, a guy who would probably be pre a pretty consistent bat just because of his contact and his avoid K ratings. But he's not really a good defensive infielder, so kind of a low-value player. Not He would never be like a superstar or anything, which I guess... I wouldn't really want to, I, I couldn't expect an offer for the arena, but Frazier's kind of interesting. He's like, he would be a, a solid fill-in for us. Um, I don't, I would want to get him for someone other than Urena, I think, and I don't really know why the Yankees would trade us Frazier in the, in the midst of a, a battle for the division. Getting a good reliever for a guy like Urena, maybe not the worst idea, maybe not a guy like Kelvin Herrera, but a, a Keone Kella. A guy with a little bit of team control left, some pretty good ratings. Um, maybe not the worst option in the world for us. In the offers for Travis, not that, uh, not really much more impressive. So I think if we're going to do this kind of trade, um, it's going to have to be a couple of our infielders for a starter. So let's take a look at some of the teams that are out of it. Um, maybe see if they have any starters that are desirable for us. This is pretty funny looking at Atlanta. Of course, Julio Tehran, kind of the... The guy I would look towards first, but man, Andrews, man, I'm not sure we won that trade. He has been really good since we traded him, and we could really use him in the middle of a rotation. What were the exacts of that trade again? That was, well, that was that trade. I guess that this was originally the trade where we got uh, Josh Bell, though, so I can't really hate on that one, but still, um, <laughs> maybe not the best trade. Here's here's Longoria. Where is Longoria right now? He's in San Francisco. Oh, he's having he's still playing really well. So we definitely I don't know, man. We we I think we've made some moves along along the way that maybe weren't so smart. I mean, this has definitely been one of the more challenging saves that I've done. I think the challenge mode this year um keeps it pretty pretty tough. I mean, even for me, I have definitely made some uh some wrong moves, I would say, since starting this, but 